Welcome to the Purpose to Create podcast, your go-to resource for creative entrepreneurs seeking growth in life, business, and wellness. On this podcast, we're into normalizing the raw parts of business most people shy away from. I'm your host, Natasha Wright, founder and CEO of Natasha Wright Creative, a coaching and consulting business for entrepreneurs. Join us for candid conversations about the creative journey, practical tips, and invaluable support for navigating challenges and losses. Get ready to connect, be inspired, and thrive amidst adversity. Tune in for empowering discussions and expert insights on overcoming setbacks, finding inspiration, and navigating loss in life and business. Hey friends, welcome back. I'm so, so excited because it is May. That means I made it through another April. April starts off really high for me with my birthday, but it is also a very heavy month of anniversary deaths for me and my family, my first cousin and my mom. And my mom's anniversary is at the end of April. So it's a very emotionally heavy month for me. One of the things that I share with my clients is that, you know, I can embrace the duality of emotions that I feel. I can feel sorrow and joy. And that is something I fully embrace and I fully embody without guilt. So let's be very clear. Now, it didn't always start that way, but I don't feel guilt about feeling happiness and sorrow in the same month for, you know, celebrating life and, you know, honoring death. And so it is just one of those things that, over time, I have come to embrace. And it's not easy, but I do it and I'm better for it. So that brings me to my reflection for this month for our creative check-in. And the creative check-in this month is going to be a little bit different because I want to share some reflections actually from a speaking event that I did over the weekend. And it was not easy. Like I mentioned, Friday was my mother's three-year death anniversary. And then the following Saturday, I had to speak at a wellness retreat on emotional resilience and wellness. And so I was able to honor my feelings and emotions. And I was also able to actually serve from an overflow. I made sure to pour a lot into myself because I know that when I speak and when I coach, it is emotionally exhausting and it takes a lot of me because I give my all and I share from a very vulnerable place and honest, open and transparent place. And so it takes a lot out of me. So I want to I want to talk from that perspective today. And share with you all that this past weekend, I had the privilege of being able to speak at the Mind, Body, Soul, and Spirit Weekend Retreat at the Wellspring Manor and Spa. It's located here in Maryland. And the focus of my session was on emotional resilience and wellness, a topic that resonates deeply with me, particularly this time of year, like I was just sharing with you all. I also was able to reconnect with our friends over at Love Goods Co., which is a gifting company and they specialize in gifts for, you know, loss, grief, celebration, things of that nature. And so I was able to actually pick up a birthday gift for myself there. It was a really cute self-starter kit to continue the celebrations for the month of April for myself. And honestly, guys, I love that for me. I'm always finding ways to incorporate self-care into anything that I do, which is why I'm such a huge advocate for wellness because wellness looks different in every season. And so this season, I need to level myself a little bit harder than I normally would throughout the year. And so this was the perfect way for me to do that. So during the retreat, I had the opportunity to engage in real-time coaching, right? So I was able to help many incredible women to unpack and explore their own resilience in life, work, and business. We discussed how the challenges we face can be a source of strength and how sharing our personal stories can offer hope to others who are struggling. The timing of this, the timing of this event coincided with a significant personal anniversary the third year since my mother's own passing. 
Each year, I dedicate this day to remembrance and self-care, which empowers me to serve others from a place of abundance, even amidst grief. This personal experience underscored the message of my talk, transforming trauma into triumph, and the importance of prioritizing our wellness through life storms, because they will come. But here's what I know to be true. Resilience is intentional. And I want to challenge the common myths about how we should cope with grief and loss. Instead of distracting ourselves or staying perpetually busy, it's essential to face our feelings and give ourselves permission to rest. As Jay-Z wisely said, you can't heal what you won't reveal. And obviously he meant it in a different context, but for for today I'm using it for this context. So by opening up about our struggles, we take the first step towards healing. And culturally, we are taught not to grieve in public. We are taught not to show our emotions. We are taught not to express our feelings. However, we're in a season of unlearning and undoing a lot of things that are harmful to us now as adults and that we are now in therapy for, honestly, working on overcoming childhood traumas as Big as we are at our old age, (laughs) we are dealing with stuff from our childhood. I'm in my 40s and I'm dealing with stuff from when I was four. Make it make sense to me, right? So I'm in a season of unlearning and undoing because I do want to heal a part of myself that was taught not to grieve in public, right? Traditionally, we're taught, if you think about it, to grieve alone, to not share our feelings, not to not share our emotions. I want you to think back to your earliest childhood memory and how you were taught to deal with the loss. And it doesn't have to be a death or a divorce or anything like that, but just kind of any loss, right? Think about when you lost a toy, what happened? Your parent probably replaced it, right? And so as an adult, you carry that with you. So when you experience a loss of any kind, you either run out and go replace it or you ignore it and suppress your feelings, right? Think about it. In relationships, we are taught, well, I'm not in that relationship. I'm going to go replace that relationship with somebody else. That's why there's a saying, I don't know the exact like verbiage for it, but basically in order to get over someone, you need to get under someone else or something. The saying goes something like that. But basically what that is teaching us is don't worry about the relationship that you just got out of, even though it may be painful, you may still feel some kind of way. Don't worry about that. Just go get somebody else so it can distract you from what you're really feeling. What you're doing is you're carrying your baggage your emotional baggage from that relationship to a new one that you have to unpack there because it's going to be triggering for you if that person does something that reminds you of the previous person. That's another topic for another day, but I just wanted to give that as an example of how we are taught how to deal with our trauma and our grief and our triggers And how we are taught to process our feelings and emotions around significant things that happen in our life. Those are the things that we're in therapy for now that we're not able to move forward from. And we are not healing the way in which we need to so we can be healed, whole, and happy for the things that are for us. We mismanage them. Because we don't know how to communicate our feelings. We don't know how to identify our feelings. We don't know how to articulate our feelings because we were taught not to communicate them. So there's some unlearning you have to do, friend, around that. Go do your personal work. Go do your work. Talk to your therapist. See what comes up for you and heal that part of yourself that struggles with that. But anyways... This weekend was a vivid reminder that while life can be tough, our spirits are tougher, right? Just like Jesus found peace in a storm, we too can find tranquility and clarity and stillness, trusting in the wisdom and timing of the divine. It's a reminder of what's possible when we embrace our vulnerabilities and step into our strength. 
Remember, we are all made in the image of our Heavenly Father called to do great things, drawing upon our faith and resilience. We exemplify the boundless potential that lies within us all. So I want to share some attendee takeaways before I wrap up because I thought this was very insightful and I still struggle a little bit with this path of speaking because it's just so interesting that I'm able to hold people's attention long enough for them to get what they need. And what I mean by that is when I'm asked to speak for 50 minutes, an hour, sometimes two hours, I personally feel like I don't have, I'm not that interesting to have that long of a conversation to keep somebody's attention and for them to get a breakthrough and for them to get clarity and for them to get unstuck and for them to walk away with something that unlocks something in them that helps them to move forward. So it's still very interesting to me that I have that capability to help others in a way that I've been helping them. And it's something that I want to start owning and standing in my power in. However, it is one of those things for me that makes me feel like, wow, God, you you chose me to be able to be a catalyst to help people be the best version of themselves. But in order for them to be the best version of themselves, they need help with their mindset, their clarity and confidence, which is where I come in. When I gave God my yes, my yes five years ago to doing this podcast, I did not know the impact that I would have on thousands of people that still does not register for me. And it's so interesting because I met another speaker at the event and she looked at me and she said, do you realize the impact that you have on people? She said, I really don't think you recognize that or know that. And I said, I actually don't because it's still so, so real to me. And it was so interesting that she was able to pick up on that because I'm I'm just a regular schmegler girl, right? A regular schmegler woman, right? And I am from DC. I'm from, you know, some of the roughest parts of DC. I grew up in the hood. I grew up on section eight. So for someone like me, to go from, you know, homelessness from a short point of uh, from a short point of time when my parents divorced and being homeless and living in shelters to someone who you know owns her own home and owns a car and owns a business that was not something I saw for myself the little version of me, right? Big me, I got it all. I want it all. I deserve it all. But my little me is, I, you know, I still sometimes struggle with like, wow, this is my life because I know what I came from. That's why I work as hard as I do. I know what I came from, right? I, it is, yeah. But anyway, I I just sometimes am in, disbelief that this is my life. And part of my calling is to help other people recognize that this is the life that God wants us all to have. He wants us to have a life of abundance, right? He wants us to have a life that where struggle is not the norm. Struggle is not the prerequisite to abundance. And, you know, being able to reaffirm that in people and let them know that in order to live an abundant life, you don't have to struggle. <laughs> it's not it's not a part of the story. That's that's my story because that just was the circumstance, right? You know, I come from a middle class family and like I mentioned when my parents divorced, we we had to start we had to start from the bo- bottom with my mother, my brother and I. And so, you know, being in shelters getting into section eight and then then moving in the hood and then you know now I I I'm a homeowner right I've I'm on my second home that I'm owning so I know what God can do and has done in my life and I know what he is for me which is why I will always give him glory because I could have not done any of this myself it's no way 
No way. I could not have survived the things that I have survived without God's grace in my life. So that's why you will always hear me talk about God. You'll always hear me give him glory because I do not take credit for this life that I have, for the things that I've had, from the opportunities that I've been afforded to. So it is just amazing to me that he chose me to be able to talk to people about resilience and wellness. And so I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to do that. And so back to the takeaways that blew me away. So let's jump right into it. Attendee takeaways. You can't hold your future hostage to your past. And it's crazy to me because these are takeaways people took from things that I said, right? I'm like, wow, I said that. I can't believe that. Another takeaway was you don't have to know all of the steps. And, you know, sometimes we, before we make a move, we need to know the plan. We need to know all 10 steps where God is like, just take the next step. Because if I really told you what it was going to be and I showed you what it was going to look like, you would self-sabotage that. And so in order to get get out of our own way, he only shows us the next step. But sometimes we can't even do that because we're so concerned about the rest of the steps. We're concerned about the work that we actually have to do in order to get to the thing that he wants us to have, which is the abundant life. Change is different from loss. I love that revelation for her. Another one is I can and should have a resilience plan. You will either pivot or be pushed by God. Wow. What a revelation. (laughs) Remember who you are. Another one is redefine your grief. And then last few, there is life after loss and resilience is intentional. Wow. Mind blown emoji drop. Wow. People got that from what I said and it's crazy to me. Like I have that type of impact and influence on other people and I do not take that responsibility lightly. Looking back, I must confess that I once found it difficult to embrace these practices fully. It took pushing past my comfort zone and realizing how I had powerfully overcome my trauma. It became evident that others might still be seeking their next step to healing. It's our stories of triumph shared through authentic obedience that empowers others to move forward. So I leave you with this reflection for our creative check-in this month. What parts of your story could be a source of strength for someone else? And who might benefit from the resilience that you have built through your experiences? Remember to reflect on who might be impacted positively by the stories you have to share. Who is on the other side of your obedience? Who is on the other side of your obedience? Wow. And If you've been following me for some time, you know, over the last year and a half, God has been dealing with me about obedience and surrender, surrendering my plan for his and fully walking in obedience to what he's calling me to do. And so little by little, I am relinquishing control over the outcome. It is not easy. I'm a go-getter, right? I'm an action taker. I make things happen. I'm a problem solver. And so I always am working on what's next versus being present in what's now. And so I am working very hard, diligently on my obedience and surrender in this season. And I encourage you to do the same, whatever that looks like for you. So before I wrap up, I'm going to make sure that I share with you a little bit more of what I gave the attendees. I created an exclusive well-being affirmations deck for the attendees, but you know, y'all my people. So I had to drop the link here for you guys too. So in the show notes, you'll see a link to access a pay what you can 10 pack well-being affirmations deck that will help encourage you on your resilience journey. I want you to remember to stay resilient and inspired in all things that you do, and whether it's life, work, or business. Friends, I'm so excited for the work that you are doing, for constantly checking in with yourself and doing your own work for your personal growth and development. All right, see you guys next episode. 
As we close out, thank you for listening to the Purpose to Create podcast, where we strive to empower and inspire creative entrepreneurs like you. Keep igniting your creativity, pursuing your passions. Yes, I said passions with an S, pursue them all, and embrace your growth. Remember to share, comment, like, and subscribe to the Purpose to Create podcast. Thank you for being part of our community. And until next time, keep creating with purpose. Peace.